Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. Now, today we're going to be doing uh, the second video in my Read Every Book by Stephen King challenge. I'm reading every book by Stephen King, and this is the second one, his second published novel. This is Salem's Lot by Stephen King. You can tell it's a, it's a Stephen King book. If you did just a subtle lettering uh, up there. Uh, of Stephen King. Uh, this is uh, the now classic vampire novel by Stephen King. Count, kind of an important book in Stephen King's career because this is his first big book, uh, his first long novel. Uh, he had written Carrie that he had had published and was a big hit. He'd written a few other books that he didn't have published until later, but they were all on the shorter side. This is uh, a full-sized Stephen King book. Of course, he would get a lot more long-winded later on, and he has a, many, many really big books, a lot bigger than this one. But this was his first full-size Stephen King book. Great, great book. Uh, I haven't read this for a long time. Early 90s, I think, is when I read this. And I remember loving it. Uh, and I noticed when I was rereading this how much I had forgotten. I realized uh, that I was confusing my memories. I was confusing my memories uh, a lot between what happened in the novel and the miniseries that came out way back in the 70s, which is a great, great miniseries. Uh, fantastic, uh, fantastic film version of this book. Uh, I just remember that so clearly all the the creepy kid floating around at the window and so many other great moments. But in my memories, uh, a lot of this was confused with that. And so as I was reading this this time, uh, I had some moments where I was genuinely surprised uh, at where the plot was going and some of the details of the plot. A lot of great stuff in this book. There's a little bit of stuff that's not so great or at least didn't work for me. Uh, this is Stephen King's version, basically, of Dracula Comes to America. Uh, this is basically the novel of a character, an awful lot like Dracula, uh, who comes to the small town of Salem's Lot. And the main character of the story is also coming to this small town of Salem's Lot. Uh, ben Mears had spent a few idyllic years of childhood in Salem's Lot, the small town of Jerusalem's Lot that they call Salem's Lot. And he's coming back because he had just suffered a great personal tragedy. And he's a successful novelist. And so he's going to spend some time in Salem's Lot, uh, try to get away from his terrible memories of the awful tragedy that has occurred, and write his book. Uh, and that's all he's planning to do. Uh, and also to confront some demons from his childhood that have to do with the creepy old Marston house that's up there, kind of on a hill overlooking the town, where he had had a frightening and possibly supernatural experience as a child. A lot going on with his Ben Mears character. Uh, the first of a few, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, characters whose, whose occupation is being a writer, something Stephen King knew a little bit about. Uh, this book, uh, this one here is the Collector's Edition. This one has a pretty good introduction by Clive Barker, uh, and uh, it also has uh, the original illustration uh, that you can see there from the hardcover version of Salem's Lot. It is probably the least frightening Salem's Lot cover I've ever seen, uh, this one right there. Certainly every other edition has had a slightly or much more frightening cover. Um, but I thought it was cool that they included that in this edition. So Ben, ben Mears the, uh, comes to town. He meets a beautiful girl in the park, Susan. Uh, they immediately start a relationship because sparks fly. You get a good uh, look at the town. You meet a bunch of the people who live in the town. Uh, this is a really well thought out and realistic small town. Stephen King does a great job describing it. Uh, a lot of the things that we that we you know get used to later on in Stephen King fiction uh, it show show up here. 
uh, as far as the characters and the town and the multiple relationships and subplots. And uh, as far as the vampire characters, they're great. Uh, I don't want to go too much into the plot. Basically, it's Dracula comes to America, comes to the small town, and pretty much takes over the town, or he's trying to anyway. Will our fearless vampire hunters stop him? Because we do get a collection of characters who catch on to what's going on, and uh, not just Ben Mears, but also a young uh, intelligent brave boy named Mark and uh, a couple other characters uh, Father Callahan who we meet in other works of Stephen King notably I think the Dark Tower series I think that might be the only other time we see him I don't know I haven't gotten that far yet but a lot of great characters in this book um, realistic uh, character work a um, couple of characters over the top Stephen King likes to have a few characters that are just over the top but most of the character work is really, really good. And the horror in this book is really good. There are some j just creepy, creepy moments in this book. Uh, Stephen King wisely uh, has taken some inspiration from EC Comics and the EC Comics vampires that he came across when he was reading those EC Comics. If you, if you look for... Uh, a strong influence in Stephen King's fiction go straight to EC Comics uh, because the vampires in this just are really a lot, a lot like the vampires in EC Comics. They're just creepy and awful and just gross and terrifying. Not like some of the vampires we've seen in recent years. No, these are genuine monsters. Uh, and Barlow is the main vampire. He's basically Dracula. He stays off stage most of the book. Uh, a great character, though, is his assistant, Straker. Uh, and I'm not spoiling anything by telling you this stuff, because the minute you meet Straker, you know he's working for the vampire. Uh, Straker is a great character as a just creepy, creepy vampire assistant. I mean, stuff. something's really off about this guy. He's kind of charming and suave, but creepy and awful at the same time. Uh, great character, Straker. Um, I liked him a lot. So the, a lot of good stuff in this book. Uh, the de creepy developments are kind of gradual. They take their time, but it's not slow at any point. Um, it, I really like this, the buildup of the horror and the buildup of the vampire uh, menace. I like how the uh, vampire hunters come together. Most of this book is really, really strong. Uh, a couple things didn't work for me in this book. Um, when the vampire hunters are finally together and Father Callahan's there, they will occasionally develop, at key moments, uh, certain characters develop kind of... I don't know any other way to put it, superpowers... And if you want the answer to that, God gives them superpowers at key moments, uh, like glowing crosses, and you could have the glowing cross, and it can you could just tap a door and it smashes, and characters will develop super strength at convenient times. That stuff didn't really land for me. That kind of took me out of it. It's like what. Now, this book obviously took its main inspiration from Dracula. I mean, the plot is basically Dracula. Um, but Dracula, that novel, was a lot more careful when it, come, when it came to that stuff. Uh, that kind of thing happened here and there in Dracula. That kind of, like, this is an overly supernatural thing, and this is a holy force or whatever. But it was... It was a lot better handled, actually, in that old-timey book, Dracula, than it was in this one. Uh, Stephen King, in this book, most of what he does works, but they're just... That stuff, for me at least, didn't. Uh, and it kind of took me out of the story a little bit. It was kind of like, oh, come on, I'm not convinced by that. Um, from what I remember of Stephen King, uh, even his early books... Uh, that I read as a younger man, there's a bit of that in his fiction. 
I, sp the stand specifically, I, I remember a couple moments like that. But I had forgotten about that bit from this book. Uh, I Maybe it just I just didn't care when I read this the first time. Maybe it worked for me when I was younger. And I'm just old and cynical now. That's, that's probably, that's true. Yeah. But uh, for whatever, mo whatever reason, that didn't land. But that's okay. There's enough really, really good stuff in this book. And I, I like the way the story was told. I like the beginning. Uh, there's kind of a framing uh, narrative that goes on. I like the beginning. I like the way it ended. So he, he actually landed the ending pretty well in this one. It does not have an infamous, 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 infamous is what I'm trying to say, Stephen King ending that some of his books have. So altogether, pretty good book. Uh, little Stephen King. I've got little Stephen King here. Uh, so little Stephen King, good job on this one, uh, little guy. I, I, that's the glowing crosses thing and the super strength, you know, because of, you know, God. Uh, that didn't really work. Um, but I appreciate it. I know it was early. It was an early work. Uh, I thought it was pretty great, actually, this book. So thumbs up, little Stephen King. Good job. I look forward uh, to the next Stephen King book. Uh, that I'll be reading, which is going to be The Shining. Looking forward to that one. Um, we're, we're still in the 70s right now for Stephen King, and that was a good time. The 70s and 80s, good time for Stephen King. So yes, I'll be reading The, Sh the Shining next. I don't think I'll be able to get to it this month. I was hoping to, but it's not looking that way. So early next month, uh, look for my next Stephen King video on The Shining. And I will catch you next time. I still have a video that I filmed up at the, the uh, Rustic Vaughn Lodge that I'll be putting up tomorrow. I wanted to put this one up this week because because otherwise I wouldn't be able to get it out till like Thursday. And next week, I've got another book review that I want to get up, uh, which will be The Metal Monster by A. Merritt. So look for that next week. And tomorrow, I've got my Supernatural Saturday video, which I filmed at a very odd hour uh, at the at the lodge and so the lighting is not great starts off dim then gets brighter then dimmer technically it's crap but hopefully the rest of the video will be good enough for you so i will catch you tomorrow at the lodge okay guys catch you next time